Hello, welcome to this video on the multivariable chain rule. You know, chain rule is built off of a composite function, a function inside of another function. So now we're talking about a multivariable function f of x, y that has x and y as separate functions themselves. Let's first approach it as if they are single variable. It's possible to replace all the x's with g's function and replace all the y's with the h function. And then you'll have only t's available. It's, it's conceivable to think of then the z derivative with respect to t. It'll be a single variable function at that case, in that case. So it'll be dz dt. It turns out to find that though, you don't have to go and do all that. You can leave it, the x's where they're at, leave the y's where they're at. And, 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 and um, work on the following formula for dz dt. You see z is multivariable, so it has partial with respect to x and it has a partial with respect to y. Respectively, you multiply those guys by the inside derivatives. It is the exact same chain rule as you had before, but it's multiple parts to it. So you take the z derivative with respect to x, partial that is, and you multiply it by x's derivative with respect to t. That takes care of that portion. And then there's also the portion that comes from y. You take the z derivative with respect to y, partial that is, and you multiply by y's derivative with respect to t. Okay, let's see it in action where we have z equals e to the xy cosine of x squared, multivariable function of x and y. But we have x and y separately functions themselves of t. We have x is equal to the square root of t and y is equal to the natural log of t. We're interested in finding the derivative with, of z with respect to time at the point 1, 0. That's written as an ordered pair, meaning that x is 1 and y is 0. Let's start off with the z's derivative with respect to x, the partial of z with respect to x. Notice how the exponential and the cosine have x in it. So we'd have to uh, um, execute the, the product rule. We take e to the xy's derivative with respect to x. It's e to the xy, but then xy's derivative with respect to x is y. Multiply by cosine of x squared, put a plus sign, leave the e to the xy alone, multiply by the derivative of cosine of x squared, which is negative sine of x squared, times 2x. Now the y partial derivative is much easier because cosine of x squared is a constant. So we just focus on the e to the xy's derivative with respect to y and get x e to the xy. You can't leave it like that though. It needs to be multiplied by that constant but in terms of y it is cosine of x squared. So this is two, this is half of the work. We have the partials with respect to x and y. And now we just need the derivatives with respect of x with respect to t and derivative of y with respect to t. Uh, if x is root t, its derivative is 1 over 2 root t. If y is natural log of t, its derivative is 1 over t. Now here's the issue that you run into. We have x and y, and we can plug them into this partial derivative and get something numerical. We don't have t. How do we get t? If x is 1 and y is 0, there needs to be one specific t that makes that happen. x equals root t. So 1 is equal to the root of t. And at the same time, y equals 0. So 0 is equal to the natural log of t. What's the t have to be? It has to be 1. The natural log of 1 is 0. The square root of 1 is 1. So you have to figure out the t because that's what goes into the bottom derivatives, the inside derivatives the single variable derivatives, and then um, 1 and 0 for x and y go into the partial derivatives. Um, let's see here. This animation is out of order. The next animation is the final answer. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, let's plug the 0 for y and the 1 for x into the partial derivative with respect to, of z with respect to x. Every place you see a, a, a y, you put a 0. That zeroes out the whole first half of that product rule. And then when you see x's, you put 1's, e to the zeros are 1. So it's a little bit strange. It's, it's negative 2 times the sine of 1. 
that's one radian. You just have to leave it like that. We don't know exactly the value of that. Just leave it just like that. Uh, next, we plug in the 0 for y and the 1 for x into the y partial derivative. And what we get out is 1 times the cosine of 1. Now, t is equal to 1, so 1 over 2 root t is 1 over 2. t is equal to 1, so 1 over t is 1. And we plug these guys in. They're color-coded from where they need to go. Negative 2 sine 1 is multiplied by a half. And cosine 1 is multiplied by 1. And we end up with cosine 1 minus sine 1. That's like 1 radian, like 57 degrees. It's just an expression. Cosine of 1 minus the sine of 1. You just executed the multivariable chain rule. And remember, this is very useful when it's time for like a related rates question. Now, what about if the inside functions aren't single variable? What about if the inside functions are multivariable themselves? Let's take a look at that. So remember now, z is a function of x and y, but now x and y are going to be functions of two variables. Call them s and t. So now you could actually replace all the x's with the g formula and all the y's with the h formula, and that would make z officially still multivariable but not of x and y it'll be multivariable of s and t so z has a partial with respect to s but z also has a partial with respect to t in this particular example question i'm going to look at the partial with respect to t so i have them color coded there and the formula that we're looking at z is uh, x root y plus root x the multivariable functions inside, x is 2s plus t, and y is s squared minus 7t. I'm interested in z's partial with respect to t when s is 4 and t is 1. Let's take the partials. What is the partial of z with respect to x? The first term is x root y. It's the, the root y gets treated like a 7. 7x's seven derivative is 7. So x root y's x partial derivative is root y. And then when it comes to root x, 1 over 2 root x, like it's a calc 1 question. What about z's derivative with respect to y? The x is treated like a constant. It's 1 over 2 root y. So it'll be x over 2 root y, and it wouldn't be anything from the second term. The root x's derivative is 0 with respect to y. Okay, great. Halfway done with our derivatives. Now we're going to come in with the single uh, multivariable derivatives inside. Um, x is derivative with respect to t. That's just a 1 because 2s minus t is the x formula. Its t derivative is 1. Y is derivative with respect to t. You don't worry about the s squared. You look at the minus 7t and you take the derivative. You get minus 7. Now, in the x and y partial derivatives, the formulas need to be, um, what needs to be plugged into them is an x and a y. Well, um, we know the s and the t. We don't know the x and the y. So when s is 4 and t is 1, you can plug them in and figure out the y. 2 times 4 plus 1, y, x is equal to 9, and y is um, 4 squared, 16 minus 7, also 9. This is animation is out of order. There's part of the answer. There is the answer, <laughs> the, the simplified version of it. Sorry about that. Um, let's plug double 9 into the x partial. We get 3 plus a sixth, 19 sixth. Let's plug double 9 into the y partial. We get 9 over 6, which is reduced to be 3 halves. Now we put all our parts together. The 19 over 6 times the 1, the 3 over 2 times a negative 7, and we end up with um, 19 over 6. And then um, the 21, you have to triple top and bottom, so, so 63 over 6. Uh, minus, that is. So when you subtract, you'll have 44 over 6 negative, but you can reduce it. And that's how you end up with the answer of negative 22 over 3. All right. So it sounds good. That's it. That'll be it for this one video, this introduction to the multivariable chain rule, useful for related rates, even in multivariable functions. In the one example, we had single variable inside functions. and this example, we have multiple uh, multivariable inside functions. My name is Nakai Rimmer. I'm happy to help you through this journey. Please comment down below, like, and subscribe. 
reach out to me if you need help. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.